All right, last week I tied a Snowshoe Hendrickson Emerger and tonight I'm tying a spinner that worked really well for me last year in that flat water. Uh, we had low water year and we're looking at another low water year. And so I did well um, making sure my flies were super sparse and um, sat low and it, it did make a difference on some fish. So this was a fly I, I did have in my box last year that I just need more of. Um, also, I'm not gonna split the tails on this fly because I didn't split the tails last year and it worked fine. So anytime I can get rid of a step, I'm happy to do it. Um, even if it's not quite as pretty, if you wanna split your tails, you know, split them, but not me. Um, so half dozen hackle fibers there. And I'm gonna keep the, the little stems of them on to build the body up because we're gonna put a very thin bite on there. I'm gonna recommend that you use turkey biots in darker rusty brown. Um, I've got some Polish quills here and that's what I'm gonna use, but I find them to be very, very delicate um, to the point that they're awesome and I love them. Um, but last year I, I, tied, I tied the fly with uh, with the turkey biots and it, and it worked great, but I'm out of turkey biots at home, so this is what I'm tying with. Um, so we have to very gently get this biot around this hook and um, you can like soak them in water if you want, but I usually skip that step too. I'm not opposed to going through at the end and putting, um, putting some epoxy on these. Um, and I probably will, but I won't put it in the video. It makes that body look awesome. So here we go with our biot. You can see biots are the key, whatever biot you use, to that nice segmented body. And I think segmentation makes a difference. I think I probably talked about that in the last video or maybe every video I make. And um, don't think it doesn't matter to the fish. In fact, in general, whatever you do in fly fishing, don't think it doesn't matter because those fish routinely eat size 30 flies. They're all capable of doing it. Even the ones that no longer do it because they're eating sculpins and stuff. They can all see that a size 30 fly is about right there to right there, AKA a couple segments. So I think it all matters. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna use a size 10 hackle. I mean, I'm tying on a neck. Necks are a great way for the home tire who's not a commercial tire to tie flies. So there's a big, long, burly hackle that you would expect me to be using on like an ISO. Well, I'm gonna use on this Hendrickson spinner. Uh, this is a marinero style fly. Um, I may have tied one like this already, I don't know, but because I have to tie, um, because like I said in the last video, I have a new fly storage system. And so I'm currently on a quest to redo how I do all my flies. And I left a lot of blank spaces to tie flies over the winter that I wanted to fish. So I stripped the stem, I lashed it on, and now I'm going to wrap away from me. And this is gonna be a mess. So what I'm doing is I'm going, I probably start a little far back, I'm gonna just kind of get right there. And I'm gonna go one wrap in front of the other, really tight as tight to the previous wrap as possible. I'm even gonna come in there and fold it back a little bit. Looking good. And I'm gonna leave room at the front of the fly. Good. Clip this off. All right, so now we just have a big old skater looking fly. What we're gonna do is put a really thin coat of dubbing on our thread. And this will be outside the camera angle, but I'm gonna go down about three inches. And then I'm going to take the fly, I'm gonna tilt this so you can see, I'm gonna pull the hackle fibers I have on it into two basic wings, there and there. Now, I'm gonna wrap over the top like so, around the bottom, over the top, around the front, 
over the top, around. Now, now that I've done over the top, you'll see the bottom I haven't touched hardly. Now it's time to go all the way around like this, all the way around the hook. So now I'm in the bottom, flip it over, and go all the way around, including the bottom, like that. And a little pull, and I don't mind if the thread shows through on this. The key right now is to get our hackle into two wings. Now we're gonna add in our turkey flat. This is just so we can see the fly. And what I do, here's a turkey flat, how you'd normally tie it in with the tips. Just flip her around and tie it in. Bring this up, clip it right there, and clip the leftover here by the eye. And what this is gonna do, once we kind of re-fluff it up, it's gonna stand up right there like a little post. Easy to see, but pretty innocuous. This is not a fly that you go out there and say, all right, there's six fish rising, I'm gonna catch all of them with the same fly. Nope, this is a fly that you pull out when you got that one fish that you have to catch. It's not gonna float forever, and it's certainly not gonna float high. It's probably not gonna look so good after you catch a fish or two with it. But let me tell you, Marinero had it right. Just in general, when it comes to dry fly fish and tough fish, Marinero had it right. So all we did to his fly was add something we could see.